Sage Wonderer here, and welcome to a rare afternoon edition of Coffee Talk! <laughs> All right, today we're going to talk about something that I touched on briefly in the one and only coffeeless Coffee Talk uh, from sometime back in the spring or winter. I talked a little bit about the inner earth, but today I want to talk specifically about New Schwabenlohn. Uh, the idea that the Germans during World War II went to Antarctica and built an underground, under ice base uh, in Antarctica, in Antarctica, <laughs> excuse me, Antarctica, and um, that you know there's this whole mythology around whether or not they did this, and so I thought I would do a video about it, a coffee talk about New Schwabenland and Inner Earth. All right. So everybody knows that uh, there was this real move by the Nazis in World War II to find anything that was supernatural or occultic in nature, uh, as seen in the uh, movie uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the Nazis are looking for the Ark of the Covenant. Well, they also uh, were searching for all kinds of relics, things like the Spear of Destiny, and it also led them to search for the mythi mythical kingdoms of inner earth, the kingdoms of Lemuria and um, Argatha. Argatha and Lemuria and Shambhala. Shambhala ba ding dong. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was silly. Uh, Shambhala. Sounds like I'm starting off on an Indian song there. Shambhala. Um, <laughs> But what a lot of people don't know is that before the New Schwabenlohn uh, Antarctic Expedition and uh, founding of potentially a base, a submarine base, before that, at the very beginning of the war, they were looking for the entrance to Shambhala. And they were looking for this in caves. And they were following ancient um, uh, stories and legends and one of them led them to Brazil. And what led them to Brazil was the story that the Brazilian Native Americans there that lived in the jungles of Brazil had, um, that there was rumors that there was a race of Native Americans, a tribe, as it were, that lived deep in the Brazilian jungles. And these uh, Native Americans are rumored to be blonde-haired and blue-eyed. Now, they don't have advanced technology, they're still just the regular natives. And it might be evidence of inner earth Nordics uh, interbreeding potentially with the Native Americans and creating these blonde haired, blue eyed natives. So, apparently this expedition went there, they did find the natives. They, they produced pictures, which you can find online, these pictures of Native Americans that are blonde-haired and blue-eyed living in the jungle, you know, white Indians. Um, it's a thing. Check it out. <laughs> anyway, they, they claim that they discovered near these tribes an opening to the underworld, an opening to uh, Lemuria, to the inner earth. Well, that's good coffee. Fresh. So, anyway, um, they claim to have found caves in this expedition that led to openings into an underground uh, city and caverns that were abandoned, but showed evidence of advanced civilizations. Inside of this cave, deep inside this cave in Brazil, they claim to have found a fully functioning, operational flying saucer. Don, don, don. Ah, that they immediately reverse engineered to create a second flying saucer. So apparently at that point they had two. The original and their remake. They also found carvings and statues of uh, humanoids. Tall, blonde, red-haired red -haired giants in these uh, caves as well. Um, and the tunnels led to a city that, you know, was... Uh, abandoned but still there and apparently they went deeper and deeper until they did contact an inner earth society and found an occupied city further down under these uh, Brazilian jungles and that during this interaction 
they were given permission to evacuate from the earth uh, in you know basically fleeing the atomic bombs and the tyranny of the rest of the world they convinced these Nordic uh, inner earth uh, beings to let them uh, occupy an area in Antarctica under the ice that is also an entrance, the South Pole entrance to the inner earth. And so, armed with a map given to them, they had an expedition and they went to, uh, they went to Antarctica and sure enough they found this under, these underground caverns that were, that were hollowed out and ready to build in. And so they built an underground city that one Nazi general called uh, Shambhala or a paradise, a fortress and a paradise. <clears throat> and so this apparently when you get underground under the ice there, then you're getting warmed by the inner earth sun at, cert at a certain point down there and, and it's not icy or cold anymore and it's warm and you can grow fruits and vegetables underground due to the inner earth sun. If you want to know more about inner earth, we can, you know, do another coffee talk on that. But this one is more about the the society and the and the people of the inner earth more than it is about the um, about the place and you know how it works but apparently there's an inner earth sun that warms the earth from the inside out makes sense I mean it's why your pipes don't freeze when you dig down <laughs> it's warm down there and apparently the further down you get the hotter it gets no pun intended. It's hot as hell. You ever hear that one? Okay. <laughs> so, at any rate, there's this story that these Nazi leaders escaped to inner Earth. And now they have this Nazi uh, flying saucer armed subculture that keeps completely to itself. That it never comes out of the Brazilian jungles. Uh, and when it does, it only comes out via air. They only come out via the air in their flying saucers. And that there are no roads going into this, these Brazilian jungles where they built this inner Earth uh, city. And culture in Brazil that is connected to New Schwabenland down in Antarctica. Um, and now they have a fleet of flying saucers, which leads us to Admiral Byrd's experience. Admiral Byrd, uh, who is a, a, definitely a character in this inner earth discussion, uh, apparently while he was looking, uh, you know, flying over the North Pole on an expedition, when he got over the North Pole, he found himself facing the opening into the inner earth where he flew his airplane in there. Uh, long story short, you can find that in the diary of Admiral Byrd, the st full story. But he also met with Nordic, uh, tall Nordic uh, race of people who had flying saucers who uh, told him that if, and this was after America used the, the, uh, uh, the bomb, the A-bomb, and basically said if we did if we ever did that again that they would come out of the inner earth like ants coming out of an ant mound and squash us all with their might for being so stupid as to release nuclear weapons and nuclear explosions on the surface that that was uh, unacceptable for them and that there would be consequences and they sent Ad Admiral Byrd back with that information also at the end of the wor word, <laughs> world world <laughs> at the end of the war the second world war Admiral Byrd was sent to the South Pole on a South Pole expedition with numerous ships and a fleet of aircraft and a large military force. And apparently, according to legend, it was his intention to go to New Schwabenland and retrieve those flying, those two flying saucers, the original from the Brazilian expedition and also the copy that they made. And to procure those from the Nazis and also to capture and jail the fleeing Nazis who were trying to get away from the tribunals by going basically underground, literally, totally underground, uh, into Lemuria and the inner earth. Don, don, don. Ah. So Admiral Byrd goes down there in true Western fashion to have a showdown with the Nazis. But apparently the Nazis at that time by then had more than two and or they were being assisted by the inner earth cultures, uh, by these Nords, these red-haired giants that live in the core of the earth. Apparently, 
they were helping them or the Nazis had more flying saucers than they thought, but these flying saucers were unleashed on the American fleet there in Antarctica. And we have eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts, we have purported film from the incident, and planes were shot down, ships were sunk, and many men were killed on the American side until we withdrew, we retreated from Antarctica with our tail between our legs, uh, faced with this very powerful anti-gravity and weapons platform uh, in the form of these flying saucers. So... Then that leads us to the last little section, a guy named Corey Good, which is, I've talked a little bit about him. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. He's all over the web. He's kind of the single author of the idea of the secret space program. And he claims that these, uh, these Nazis that got their technology from the inner earth dwellers, who are the source of the flying saucers, the disc-shaped craft that we see uh, are in fact these Nords and uh, some people claim that the greys that we are seeing aren't even actual human beings but they're uh, they're cyborgs or they're clones and they're slaves just they're scientific gatherers and they're kind of like machines and they're not like I mean they're being sent by the Nords which is what some people say that's another coffee talk altogether right there but Corey Good claims that the Nazis did build uh, flying saucers, that they did go to space, that they, and according to Corey Good, uh, they discovered that uh, when the Nazis got to the moon way years before we did, decades before we did, that they got to the moon in the 50s, that when they got there, they discovered that the dark side of the moon, since their aircraft, their anti-gravity aircraft, their, um, you know, it's, I won't get into the technology of these crafts, that's for another video, but, you know, they can, they were much more advanced and able to explore the moon around to the dark side of the moon and they uncovered according to Corey Good a whole civilization already existing of alien um our alien forefathers who live on the moon because the moon is a hollowed out sphere and inside of it are all of these people and it was hollowed out by the giant class the true giants apparently at once upon a time our great 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 grandfathers were massive giants this is a whole nother thing but Corey Good says the Nazis were advanced they went and made a deal with the moon dwellers acquired more technology from the moon dwellers and were engaging in interplanetary space travel and creating Creating interplanetary interplanetary uh, coalitions and collaborating with other races uh, around the stars uh, before we ever made it to the moon. <laughs> and by the time that we started, you know, sending out the space shuttle and things like that and building the International Space Station, by then the Nazis had already uh, built, um, I don't know, agreements and treaties with other races from light years away. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that the, the Nazis escaped somehow and went to Antarctica and now they're flying to the stars. And apparently we work with them quite a bit. And some say that there is in fact a, uh, a secret New Schwabland Nazi, um, what do you call it when you have your ambas an embassy, that they have an embassy in New York. That there's an embassy to the UN in New York that represents New Schwabenland, and it's on a building on the 13th floor of the building, and they so they don't have a 13th floor, they skip it. So there, you have to know, you have to punch in a code to get off on the elevator at the 13th floor that doesn't exist, so that you can go and uh, visit the New Schwabenland Nazi embassy in New York. Don't don't don't. So Corey Good has fleshed this story out. This this mythology, this interesting stuff. I don't know if any of it's true, but it sure is interesting and it's a great way to blow a day or two just kind of laying around drinking coffee and watching videos on this and, and learning about it. But, you know, I've been studying this for a long, long time. <clears throat> but some of the new stuff that I'm uncovering and tying together with the Corey Good story, uh, interesting stuff. Atlantis was evacuated to the core of the earth and some people that stayed on top made the rest of, uh, of, of the civilizations that survived were from survivors that didn't go underground or came back after it dried up from underground or as it says in the Bible on Noah's Ark and um, that 
but most of Atlantis and all of its technology were evacuated to the inner Earth to uh, be saved from the flood, apparently. So, anyway, interesting stuff. Tell me what you think in the comments section. All right, see you next time on Coffee Talk. <laughs>